Hello, Romantics. I'm Sarah Gomez, author, romance lover, and host. You're listening to Romancing the Story, a podcast centered around writing, reading, and story structure, all with a twist of romance. We're at episode 41, and on today's episode, I chat with author, speaker, and friend of the podcast, Shayla Raquel. We discuss how authors can get invested in any stage of NaNoWriMo and pick up some great tips and tricks learned along the way. Shayla's won NaNoWriMo before and shares the tools she created in order to set up authors for success. Links for the NaNoWriMo Planner, Shayla's Facebook group, and how to connect are all listed in the show notes, also known as the episode description. Be sure to check there for a short list of some of our favorite writing craft books that we mention in the podcast. If you have a chance to listen several episodes back, I talked about tarot readings for authors with LJ Keys. Well, LJ is running a NaNoWriMo special only for the month of November, where you can get a 20-minute tarot reading for your writing for $20. If you're stuck on plot or need more character development, LJ's tarot readings are a great resource to provide guidance on your story. Be sure to take advantage of the offer by using the link to LJ's Google form in the show notes and mention the $20 for 20 minute tarot reading in the form. Information will be available in the show notes. With that said, let's jump right in. Welcome, author, self-publishing mentor, and speaker, Shayla Raquel. Yay. Hello. It is so good to be back. We had such a blast the last time we got to do a podcast, but I thought it was like two months ago, and um, I don't know if you know this, but it was longer than that. So I'm really glad to be back. <laughs> I know. I know. In fact, my when I told my husband you were coming back on the podcast, he was like, didn't you just have her? And I was like... <laughs> I mean, it it feels feels like like it. Yeah. (laughs) I'm very happy to be here, especially right now because I'm pumped and I'm excited about writing. So you picked a good time to talk. Oh, fabulous. And I know, like, it's, you know, one of our biggest months of the year. It's NaNoWriMo, right? (laughs) Yeah, it is. It's it's my favorite time of the year because while I'm doing NaNoWriMo, I get to be surrounded by all the fall things, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, because it's like raining today and I just, I'm like, I'm really, I'm excited to kind of like hunker down under Mm -hmm. pillows and just kind of (laughs) write. Yes. I, I, it's raining here as well. And since I sit at my bay window, I officially have a bunny rabbit that hangs out in my front yard. So very distracting, but super cute. (laughs) Yeah. Super, super adorable. Um, and And you are our favorite marketing maven on the podcast. (laughs) So like in case listeners don't know, can you tell them a little bit about yourself and your NaNoWriMo experience? I would love to. So for those of you who haven't heard of me, which that would be basically everybody except for like five people. (laughs) Um, I am a self-publishing mentor. I'm a book marketer. I'm a speaker. And of course I am an author and I'm also an editor. So the way I describe it is if it has something to do with books, I most likely have my hands in it somehow, some way. And I've been very, very, very blessed to be able to do this professionally for 12 years now, um, just barely over 12 years, which just seems impossible. But I've had a blast doing it. I've worked with some wildly talented authors. And that's my day. Every day I'm working with authors, helping them go from idea to holding that book in their hands for the first time. So it's a very busy life, but it's a really rewarding life. And what's kind of fun is, you know, with me having my own books, what I learn with them, I can apply to myself and vice versa. And I haven't had a book out since February, 2022. Mm -hmm. So my last book was Savage Indulgence, which was my first official go at horror. And I had a blast with it. It's my favorite thing I've written, but I have a full length thriller that I have wanted to write since 2019. And I decided to spend all of October prepping for national novel writing month in November. And I am officially, I'm already, um, let's see how many words in I am. I am officially 5,401 words into the new book. Yay. Woo, yeah. And you've won, pre- won, quote unquote, right? Previous I did. Nano, 
Yeah, I did in 2018, which there's a picture of me on the day that I won and it's priceless because I, my eye is twitching and like my hair is sticking up in this weird semi bald spot. And, <laughs> and I was so excited because I won, which wound up becoming the 10 commandments of author branding. I didn't use it for fiction. I used it for nonfiction. And so that's how the, the 10 commandments of author branding was written. And then it was published like eight months later after lots of rewriting and editing. Oh my gosh. That's, that's incredible. I didn't know you had written the, the yeah. 10 commandments of author branding. Yeah. Through NaNoWriMo. I, but I was going to do a book of short stories for like the first week, first few yeah. days. And then I totally switched gears. Well, and I think that is a misconception people get about NaNoWriMo. It, mm. It's really any writing, right? Yeah. I think it is at least. Yes, it stands for like National Novel Writing Month, but mm -hmm. all sorts of people do all sorts of things. I've even seen people do it for poetry. I mean, like, and, and they'll create their own word count. Yes, it's 50,000 words, but you don't have to do that. You can come up with a different word count goal for you. Yes, I actually have a girlfriend who's doing that. She's actually doing, she just wants to complete her novel and she's 50K mm -hmm. in. So she mm -hmm. says she's going to focus on 30K for the month. That is That's an excellent goal. And it's an attainable goal, I think. 50,000 mm -hmm. is hard. It's very, very difficult. Yes. It requires a lot of discipline, which writers are so well known for is that discipline, yeah. right? So uh, it that's why prepping the month before makes a big difference. And I think- increasing your chances of having a successful NaNoWriMo. Exactly. And since it's already here and if people are like me and they kind of procrastinated with a really busy October, mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any suggestions for like how writers get invested now? Is it too late? It's never too late. And, and I do really want to stress that because I'm an all or nothing individual. And, mm -hmm. and so I, can fall into that trap of like, well, it already started on the first. It's too late. I don't have this. I don't have that. That is what always kills me is being an all or nothing person. And I have to really train myself to understand that that's not true. There's a middle ground. Um, what I recommend is if you're looking to start NaNoWriMo, I don't care if you're listening to this on the 10th of November, on the 15th, you can still jump in because what you have to understand is that one is greater than zero. If you write one sentence. Do you understand how much bigger that is than zero sentences? Mm -hmm. It. I, I really want to stress that. So if you decide, you know what, I'm going to get involved in the community of NaNoWriMo. I'm going to get that accountability. I'm going to really push myself to see what I can do in the remaining days of November. Do it and give yourself an attainable goal. You don't need to do 50,000 words if you can't. Don't do that. Do something like 10,000, 5,000. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you wrote something. And we have to get into that mindset as writers so that we don't wind up going months without writing something. I completely agree. And I think sometimes the hardest part for us as writers is it is kind of an all and nothing mentality. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. getting started is the really difficult yes. part. Yes. Yes. And you know, one of the things that I recommend is if it's been a long time since you've done any writing and you're just feeling really down on yourself and those limiting beliefs are getting to you, go set the timer for 30 minutes, 15 if you want. It's the Pomodoro method mm. and simple, like, turn off your phone, silence everything, lock the doors, whatever, and commit to 15 minutes, 30 minutes of writing. And the minute that your timer goes off, you can stop. You do, you, that's it. But the point is you want to keep going. It, the problem is that I don't want to sit down and look at how long it's been since I've done any writing mm -hmm. and you feel bad about it and you feel guilty. And uh, well, another big one is if you're working on a story, you've been working on one, but then you haven't looked at it in months, you have no idea what's going on. Like you've forgotten the story, you've mm -hmm. forgotten where you're at. So you can use that 30 minutes instead to kind of rejuvenate your mind a little bit to help you remember where you were at. That's my biggest problem. And that's why rewrites for the 10 commandments of author branding is taking so long because I've had months in between working on it. And then I forget what I'm doing. And, and so I want to give you guys permission to just sit there and read it. If you need to read where you left off, if that's what you need to do. For a lot of authors, I think too, we, it's hard to get started, but then too, it's mm -hmm. that lofty goal ahead of time of like 50 K it's just kind of hovering over us. <laughs> And yes. Just like, and, and I remember a post you just posted not too long ago talking about NaNoWriMo said the goal is not a full draft, right? No, of course not. And it's certainly not 
a good draft. That's what a lot of people, um, and I, and I am trying to, I do want to write my best. I understand that, but no one's asking you to do rewrites on the novel that you're writing as you're writing it during NaNoWriMo. No, get the words on the page. That is what the rest of the year is for rewrites, editing, beta readers. This is not the time for that. This is getting the words on the page. Now I, I will say that having the outline, having character sketches, having those things makes your writing more productive Mm -hmm. and makes it better. But no one is asking you to write a ready to go manuscript. As an editor, I'm begging you, we don't want that. Do not come to me in December, okay, on December 1st after NaNoWriMo and say, I wrote my manuscript. Here you go, (laughs) because I will not take it. You need to go back through it and you need to revise it, work on deep revision, those types of things. And I hope that gives people some permission. Like it's, you know, what, what is the quote? It's, um, oh goodness, you can't edit a blank page. Mm. Okay. So, so get something on the page and then you can come back and edit it. Sometimes depend. It's just words on a page. It's sometimes just brainstorming. Sometimes I'm just yes. going like stream of consciousness sometimes with mm-hmm. my words, because I'm not quite sure what I want to say, but I don't want it to hold me up. Because right. I just got to keep writing. So what I end up doing is I end up highlighting stuff that I'm like, I know that's not going to work for later. <laughs> yes. But I'm just going to highlight it for now because I know fine. I want to change that. Yeah. Yes. I do that too. All right. Okay. If I'm stuck on a scene, but I know Shayla, you got to get that 1,667 words in today for NaNoWriMo, but I'm stuck on a scene. And if I can tell that I'm like falling into the rabbit hole of research, I stop and I just put five X's there. And that's all that I do. I just leave five X's and I'll, that means I can come back and work on that scene and do the research later mm-hmm. because that'll get me, that'll make me stop writing and, and I can come back to it. You have a planner, right? I do. Yeah. I do. Don't you have a section for that too? Like to things to write down for research yes, later? Yes, I do. Because yes. that's such, I, I know you mentioned that the other day in one of your posts, and I thought that is a brilliant idea, something to, so I can keep track of what I need to research for later. Cause I know I'm going to forget. <laughs> you will. And we fall into those traps a lot because research is the most fun thing ever. I love research, but mm-hmm. if you're supposed to be getting a word count goal in and you're spending three hours researching the most minute thing ever that's only going to matter for one two sentences this is not the time for that so that's why you highlight that's why you leave the x's that's what whatever i don't care what you put there put a break um put the words in bold come back later that's fine but keep writing so that you don't fall into that rabbit hole trap but yes i'm glad you brought up the planner i would love to talk about it and tell you about it yes please do because i thought it was such a great idea because i Thank do you. yes i have uh, my thoughts are kind of chaotic and wild so i need a, something to kind of keep me on track on what i need to focus on yes <laughs> yes and i will tell you there are lots of planners well not lots but th- but there are some planners out there my problem was like i had certain things i wanted out of a NaNoWriMo planner and it turned into, well, I'm just going to make one for myself so that I have everything I want for it, which of Mm -hmm. course turned into, oh, I think other people need this. (laughs) So I created it. It's called the NaNoWriMo 2022 planner and workbook. Mm -hmm. And it has 22 pages that you can print from home. So it is available on Etsy for the very ridiculously low price of five bucks because we are in the middle of a recession and we cannot afford much, but hey, five bucks buys almost a full latte for me here in Yukon, Oklahoma. So I am going to show you what I did. I went and got a binder Mm -hmm. because I love binders. Um, Do you watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine? I do. I do. (laughs) Okay. So Amy is obsessed with binders and every time she talks about it, I'm like, that's a good binder. You know, I really, (laughs) really feel like I relate to her. So the first thing that I have is just for me, you know, I like to have my little, my name on it and say what year of NaNoWriMo is there. So again, everything you're seeing is what you get for $5. Mm. I have a NaNoWriMo to-do list. So I'll show that here. And we don't have to sit here and read it, but it's just a few things that you need to remember to do for NaNoWriMo. Like make sure you have a NaNoWriMo.org account. Make sure that you're familiar with the badges that they give you for certain milestones. All sorts of cool ideas here to help you prepare. I like having this at a glance page, which like I really couldn't find any planners that did that. 
And I, I just like having that so that I can know what's going on. So the at a glance is simple. It's your title, your genre, your word count goal. I even ask, you know, to make myself think, what is the POV? What is the tense? What is the theme? I even give the time period and setting those types of important things that I can see the moment I open this binder. And it's helpful to just have something simple like that. Um, and I do have a NaNoWriMo calendar in the signature blue because some people like having just an actual calendar that they can do whatever they want with, which is nice. And because I am a marketer, I love to have some hashtags because if you're sharing your whole experience of doing NaNoWriMo, you want other people, you want to meet other people who are doing this and hashtags on Instagram, Twitter, um, TikTok, they can help you find those communities. But this is like, my second favorite thing. And this was the one thing where like every planner has it, but they're missing one thing. So I'm actually going to take this out so I can mm -hmm. show you. This is my word count tracker. Okay. Ah, so every planner it. has this and it has that you'll find out there. It has, I did add the year and then I don't have a book title yet. So I left that blank, but I give you the goal that you're supposed to have. If you're following the NaNoWriMo rules, every single number that you would need for each day and then I give the actual count. So how much did you actually write on that day? And then you can subtotal it here. But this is what I wanted. I wanted a mood. I wanted to be able to say what my mood was when I was writing that day. Because I'm really intensely into mental health and understanding what was my mood that day. So what's, what's really interesting about this is if I can tell that I was frazzled, like that was my first mood, I felt really scatterbrained on the first day, mm. then I feel pretty awesome knowing that even though I was frazzled and scatterbrained, I still went over the word count goal by six words. And that makes me feel really cool. And I know there's going to be a day on here where it's going to say something like sad, angry, uh, another frazzled, and maybe my word count is going to be really low. And that's okay because I was frazzled, I was sad, I was angry, or it might even say zero. So having this little mood column was really important to me. And maybe it's something so small that isn't a big deal to other people, but I think it makes a difference being able to see what your mood was on the day that you were writing. Well, and I love that you actually included that because that was something I actually heard from feedback from authors when I did really? ask, yeah, what would you want to hear about for NaNoWriMo? And someone says, you know what? The first half of NaNoWriMo, I'm killing it. I'm just, I'm getting out those that words. I'm doing great. It's the second half that gets yes. me. I'm feeling despondent, disappointed. Uh -huh. I feel like I haven't met my word count or I just hate yep. my writing. So, oh, you start, the problem is they'll start reading it. Oh, they'll no. go back and they'll start reading what they wrote and they'll do exactly what every writer does. Mm. This is, this is garbage. This is a trash fire. What am I even doing? So that, that is something that we all kind of fall into. And you're right. If you're monitoring your mental health while you're writing, and by the way, you don't have to apply this just to NaNoWriMo, like, please feel free to apply this to your everyday writing life. But if you're monitoring that, this is really invaluable information to understand why you wrote zero words, why you wrote a lot of words, why you didn't, like whatever it may be, it it helps having that information. So other things that I added, you were right, I do have a special place just for your research because you need to be able to just jot down a few keywords that you need to research so that you don't fall down that rabbit hole. We do not have time for that. Mm -hmm. We have 50,000 words to write. Um, I also have the amazing I'm, i actually have it right here but it's two pages of the writer's block emergency kit because it's gonna happen and you're going to feel blocked and a lot of times with writer's block what you're really experiencing is writer's procrastination mm. so i give a lot of ideas here where you're like stuck and you don't know what to do flip over to this you know and you can go look at number eight Choose a minor character or an unexplored setting in your story and create a spinoff centered on them. Guess what? You're still getting your words in, but now you're unstuck. Um, one of my favorites on here has got to be number 14. Do something else creative. This can be painting, listening or playing music, cooking, making a video, growing, working in your garden, dancing, finishing a puzzle, crocheting, anything that is also creative. I've found that when you take your mind off something entirely and go do something else creative, it brings out that creativity and you're writing all over again. Mm -hmm. It's a really good trick. 
So I like having these two pages of an emergency kit, but this is my number one favorite and it's simple, but it's my fave. So this is the reward chart and it has a little start flag and it has a signature blue for NaNoWriMo. And here's how I did it. So I planned it to where when you get to the fifth day, the 10th day, the 15th, 20th, 25th, and of course the very last day of NaNoWriMo, that is a milestone met. That's a big deal. So you get to reward yourself. So for example, my very first reward, as long as I meet my goal, I have to meet that word count goal. I get to go to a cute, adorable farmer's market tomorrow. So I started with something simple that I don't do very often. And then the second one, you guys will be interested in this. So I went and booked a massage like for, it's like a Thursday at 1.30 p.m. If I don't meet my goal, I have to call her and cancel. And that's money that she's not getting. So I went ahead and like scheduled it so that it puts a fire under me to really make sure that I'm hitting my word count. Um, the next one is another simple reward where I get to go buy a book for my TBR, like my Goodreads list. And I already know what book I want. It's um, it's a true crime book by Paul Holes, who is just like amazing. So that's one of them. And then the other reward that I'm dying to get, like this is a big deal to me. There is a master class with one of my heroes. He is the most well-known FBI profiler alive. <laughs> His name is John Douglas and I'm obsessed with him. And he has a master class. And I cannot get that masterclass unless I hit my milestone, my milestone. And then the fourth one, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this one is cool. This is dinner and a movie. So as long as I hit that goal, I get to go out with my husband on a Friday night. And we're going to go to the movie theater. We're going to have a really nice dinner. But Sarah, it's time for me to tell you about my grand prize. My grand prize is a hundred dollars that I get to keep to myself, fold up instead of giving it to my arch nemesis. Oh, <laughs> so let me explain. At the beginning of this year, I said that if I do not have a full, like a draft of my thriller, if I do not have one, I have to pay one hundred dollars to my arch nemesis. And like everybody on my newsletter knows about it. I, this is not, I have been clear about it. Mm. And so as long as I meet that goal of 50,000 words, I get to keep that $100. If I don't have a full draft, I have to send him $100. Man, that's a, that's a motivator <laughs> right there. <laughs> it is the best motivator I have ever come up with. And I don't know where I read it from, but I thought, there is no way I'm giving a hundred dollars to this guy. And so if you are really looking <laughs> to meet any goal as a creative, I recommend the $100 to your arch nemesis. That's the one. That's the one I recommend. Um, next up in the binder, everybody, I think this is probably why a lot of people buy this, to be honest, is several pages of the character sketch. So I teach on character sketches and I've really beefed these up over the years, but I give the basics like, you know, their birthday, their nationality, their occupation, their relationship status, their enemies. And every page always has like a quote, you know, got to have that. After the basics, we have backstory. So backstory is really fun because you get to get into their upbringing. You get to get into any childhood hobbies, sports. What about childhood obsessions? Um, what about their personal beliefs? What about childhood trauma? These are really important things for you to understand about your character. So I think the people who have this planner, they're able to think of things like, wow, I didn't even, I didn't even know to put that in there. And it's going to make a huge difference in understanding your character. But my favorite is doing the physical characteristics because I get to create a Pinterest board to go with it. And I like to see what my protagonist, my antagonist, what these people are going to look like. So I love being able to fill that out. And of course, we get into distinguishing characteristics. Very important, too. These are when you start talking about mannerisms, habits, even pet peeves and their speech. How does your character talk? Because mm. if you know where they were born and raised, if you know where they've spent a lot of their time, that's going to be important to how you write their dialogue. 
And emotional characteristics has a good page here too. I ask you to think about what is their love language? What is their Myers-Briggs personality type? What is their biggest fear, their accomplishments? So for my protagonist, she owns an award-winning bakery. And so her accomplishments are having these really cool local awards for doing such amazing work with her bakery. But I think that you guys can really create an incredible character by answering these questions in this character sketch. Well, and what a great way to not only start on the book and get ideas for who these people are, where your story's going to go, but also it's a really great, like later on for like, uh, keeping that same, making sure that those characters don't change and marketing for later Yes, on. consistency. It matters. Somebody had the funniest poem um, a few months ago. It was a tweet that went viral. It was something like, I don't know, roses are red. You said his eyes were blue, but they were hazel on page 52, something like that. And, and I just thought that was priceless. So helping you to dig deep into your characters characters are a story you don't have that's everything your character has to be everything you can create the coolest plot that you want but if you don't have remarkable captivating flawed characters it's going to it's going to fall it's going to fall short so that's why these character sketches are such a big deal in this planner well, and I think that is uh, incredible that you have that. You've even thought of the emotional piece that goes with Very it. Very important. Is, yes, so important, especially for like a lot of the, you know, fictional dramas, a lot of the nonfiction too, but a lot of the fictional like- um, Oh, books. I have my memoir authors do this. Oh, I have my true. memoir true. authors do character yes. sketches. Yeah, which is always funny to think of these real people as characters, but um, they are. And I do have, I think my favorite thing is finding out their Myers-Briggs personality because it helps me fi like fill in a lot more blanks. So I have a lot of fun with that. And if you know their Myers-Briggs, then if all of your characters, if you know what they are, if you know their personality types, you can also look up who their rivals are and who their love interests are. So like, who does an ENFP get along with? Who do they, eh, it's kind of iffy and who do they clash with? So you can have a lot of fun with that too. It's really interesting to see how many people can take a pretty good character and then when applying these types of um, these types of emotional characteristics, it changes the game. It, it takes your character up to a 10. You know, for example, with my antagonist, his name is Daniel, and I happen to know because of all the research I've done, building him in my head, looking things up, researching, I know that he has narcissistic personality disorder. And I know that when you couple that with what he does for a living, he's a pilot. And when you couple that with how he treats women and how he must be viewed by other people, you have a really good potion for an interesting, captivating antagonist. And that's only from all the research that I've done that I've been able to figure that out. But you have to ask these types of questions to get there. Yes. And it actually it reminds me a lot of, um, I heard a talk by Angela Ackerman who did the emotional thesaurus. I love her. Oh gosh, I love her. She is and, everything. Uh, and the emotional, all of her thesauruses are just mm -hmm. incredible. The emotional thesaurus, all the- all I the have almost ones. all of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is a genius. And so is Becca, like what they have created. I, I tell people, I don't know how to write without the emotion thesaurus. I'm serious. Like I, I say it kind of funny, but it's always on my desk. I have told everyone I've ever known about it if they're writing because it takes everything to the next level. It's not just for dialogue. You know, a lot of people were using it um, to help beef up their dialogue and it does. That is a wonderful tool, but it, what about the internal dialogue? What about when someone's narrating prose and they see, let's say it's first person and they see through narration how that person is reacting? Oh man, lots of fun stuff that you can use with the emotion thesaurus and her settings, the ones that she has for that, like the urban setting. Awesome. Oh, just so like, cool. Yes. So great. But she had mentioned- five. And yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Um, and she was saying, I remember in the discussion that you do have the- like what everyone else kind of sees, the emotion that everyone else mm -hmm. sees, but there's yes. always a subtext emotion yes. going on. 
So I love that you have that. Yes. I love that you have that emotional piece in there because we can figure out the first layer of emotion this character is going through, right? But then there's another underlying current in there. Yes. And that's what body language helps us understand. Active Mm -hmm. setting is something that I started learning about last year. I should have known about it years ago, but active setting helps us create subtext. And it's a very underutilized tool for writers because we kind of forget about our settings. You know, we, Mm -hmm. we do a few things and then we're like, okay, back to plot and characters. And I've learned that setting is like this out of the park tool that you can use to beef up any part of your story. And I've had a lot of fun learning about it. And the book that's taught me so much, it's literally called, um, active settings for writers, if I recall. So I'll make sure you have that link for the show notes, but it is a very underutilized tool. Um, So last in the workbook, this one is several pages as well. I teach on the hero's journey. I teach classes on it. And so I decided that, you know, these, these guys need to get an outline in place. Even if it's something really simple, I'm not asking you to come up with like the world's greatest outline, but something where you can answer some really important questions about your story. So the hero's journey, in this case, I did the, I believe I did the 12 act structure Yes, I did. There's different structures. Like I think the original is 17, but this is a 12 point, I should say 12 point structure with three acts. And so it starts with meeting the hero in the ordinary world. And I ask people, I say in this binder, what is an average day like in your hero's world? This is before anything gets bad. What is that average day like? And then you go to the second part, which is the call of adventure. So I ask them, what is your hero's problem? which is a flaw that needs fixing. What is your hero's want, which is a goal the hero is pursuing. And third, what is your hero's need? This is that life lesson that is universal. This is why we read books. This is what we find out at the end of the story. Theme, I understand is sometimes very organic, but I actually did choose the theme before I started writing the story. And my theme There are all sorts of themes. There's forgiveness, there's self-acceptance, there's survival. Um, There's a whole list of things. Redemption, that's a theme. All sorts Mm -hmm. of themes that you can pull from novels. So my theme is quite specific. It's not a one word theme, but I did choose this prior to actually starting NaNoWriMo. So her want, Dina is her name, and her want is to move on from the abuse of Daniel and focus on starting over. That's what she wants as a character. But if I gave her that, we don't have a story. So instead, I have to give her a need. And that need is that she needs to take justice into her own hands and start finding justice for others. So I don't want to give away a lot with the story, but basically the, the entire story starts where she's leaving the courthouse steps and her ex-husband gets off scot-free. So you can think of this as a Brock Turner and Chanel Miller kind of situation. Um, and so for her, she decides, she really thinks I just need to move on, move forward. I I lost. I lost. And yes, this is the worst thing that could ever happen, but I'm not going to let him steal my day one more time. He's not going to hurt me anymore. I'm going to move forward. But if I did that, we'd have no story, right? So instead Mm -hmm. you throw a wrench into everything. And what I'm doing through the hero's journey is I'm saying, nope, now your business is going to suffer. Now you have no one, you have no money. I'm going to make it to where you cannot live in this status quo world anymore. You have to find that need, that universal life lesson. So there are several pages here for the hero's journey to help you get through your whole story. Now, there are lots of plotters uh, and pantsers out there. And uh, now we've even come up with the term plancers, which I think that's where I live because I do my outline, but I do not have some extraordinary pages long outline per beat. I'm not doing that. I need to have some creativity here, but I do hope that the hero's journey in this helps everyone ask some questions they didn't know to ask. And I do recommend that they read Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody. I have never found any other book that comes close to what she teaches. Trust me, I have looked. So if you are looking to understand how to outline a novel in a way that doesn't make you want to pull your hair out, that is definitely my recommendation. 
Well, and this planner seems like it has like everything you would need to, to, to really start your novel. So, I mean, you, you could use this outside. Yeah. I mean, it's oh awesome. yes, you could use this outside yes. of Nano, right? Oh, there's no doubt about it. And I'll probably re-release it um, as after NaNoWriMo and do something that's more, you know, take out the NaNoWriMo name. I'll still have it available, no doubt. That'll always be available. But I'll create another one that's for people who aren't doing NaNoWriMo, but they still want all of those resources. Right, because that is something I have asked several authors before, especially ones who do like either um, fantasy, but this can go for anybody, mm -hmm. anyone who does fantasy or any kind of uh, really deep world building. It is like honestly any yeah. genre. I'm mm -hmm. serious. It is any fictional genre. And then the only other nonfiction genre it would be creative like memoir, because you do have a hero's journey in a memoir if you have a good memoir. So um, again, this happened because I desperately wanted it for myself. And isn't that kind of funny how those things work out and you, you get in there and you're making it, you're working on it forever. And then you're like, oh, wait, everybody else wants this too. Right. <laughs> so, so that's why I put it up on Etsy and I wanted people to be able to just print this five bucks. You have it at your house, you have it wherever you go and you don't feel so lost. And I think it kind of feels like a companion to me because every day it's only four days in, but every day I'm so excited to like cross off my reward, type it, or excuse me, write in my word count that I did for the day, my mood for the day, looking at, okay, here's where I am in the hero's journey. It's just awesome to be able to see that progress. And that, that is a big part of it too, I think, to keep the momentum, right? For writing yes. as we actually see something like coming of our progress. It's really yes. hard when you're just writing into the, like onto a page and you don't really see the prog progression of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need to be able to see how awesome you're doing. And I do want to just say anybody on here who gets the planner and workbook tell me, give me feedback. I want to make it 10 times better. If you're like, Shayla, I really wish you had this in it, or I wish you had more of something else. I will do it. Cause I, I really want this to be something that only gets better with time. So I'm always open to feedback. And if people are looking for like support for NaNoWriMo, yes. Yes. like what is a good resource for that? So as far as accountability and a community, mm -hmm. Yes. So I actually started a Facebook group for this and it's called NaNoWriMo Adventures. And I, of course, will make sure you have the link. It's funny because I pulled so back on Facebook in the last two years and only recently started kind of posting on my profile again. But I it's really kind of hard to be the ease of a Facebook group. Hate to admit it, but it's pretty simple. So I started a Facebook group called NaNoWriMo Adventures. And every day I have two posts that come out in the very morning. It's It could be anything. It's me just trying to motivate and encourage you, or it's a prompt you know, to share. I think yesterday was share what your protagonist looks like and what you hope that that person looks like. Um, I think today's was share your writing space. So I got to see people's writing spaces where they're writing. And one, someone put like a photo and their cat was just sprawled out on the desk, which I just thought was perfect. Mm -hmm. And then every night at around like 930 central, we have a check-in for your word count. So how many words did you write on Thursday? on Friday. And it's just, I'm already seeing it grow. We have almost 50 members and people are really excited. And it's so cool to see how proud they are of themselves. And I'm really picking up on some positive attitudes because there are people in there who are like, you know, I got 350 words in today. And that is big progress for me because you know, I have a newborn or I have this going on and I'm like, good for you that you didn't feel down on yourself because you didn't get the coveted 1,667. Who cares? You wrote 350 words that you didn't have before. That's awesome. So there's a lot of really positive energy in the group. And that makes me really happy. Yeah. And like you said, 350 words is still progress, right? It's it still 350 is. more than it's you had before. It's always progress. One is always greater than zero. And I say it so much that it's like, it's probably like a broken record, but it is true. We have to get out of this mindset that, uh, you know, I, I need to have the perfect writing space and the perfect writing environment and the house clean. And I have to get, I need to go above the 16. It needs to be 2000 words. It needs to be 3000. You are setting yourself up for failure every time that you come up with those kinds of, I, I don't even really, I don't know. They're, 
I don't know what the word is, but you're putting these restraints on you and you're kind of setting yourself up to fail because life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. Just just today, Sarah, I was telling you that we woke up and our AC is leaking water all over our floor. So I don't plan for those things. And you have to be able to give yourself grace when life gets in the way and be like, okay, all right. So yes, today was a dud, but you know what? Tomorrow is a new day and that's all right. Give yourself grace if you don't hit those work count goals. And so we've talked about all the great methods you can use, like the planner, giving yourself grace, yes. creating all these, um, you know, plan, you know, planning out to where charting to where, you know, where you want to be for yes. like your writing trajectory and nano. So what are things that you found that don't work or you wouldn't suggest? That I wouldn't suggest for NaNoWriMo? Mm-hmm. Okay. So going it alone. Everyone wants to act like writing is a solitary experience. And I just, maybe it's the extrovert in me, but I disagree with that. I don't think that's true. Um, when you isolate yourself and it is just you going it alone and nobody knows about your writing and nobody's there to hold you accountable and nobody knows anything about your goals, that just does not sound very fun to me. So do not feel like, well, I'm not going to share this with anybody. I'm not going to get involved in a community. I'm not going to meet up with writer friends. I've got this. I'm just going to do it on my own. It's the same thing with losing weight. Women will stop after four weeks on average. They will stop after four weeks unless they have accountability. If they have an accountability partner, they're going to be look. They're going to be sitting really pretty. Um, men are just annoying. They just think about weight loss and they lose weight. So in the case of us as writers, get some accountability because it's not going to work. I'm sorry, but it just doesn't. And if you are this one random person in the universe who's like, I've been going it alone for years and I've written multiple books and I don't talk to anyone. Okay, congratulations on that. But that's not what I recommend for most people. You need to get out of the house. Go meet up with your writer friends at a coffee shop one night a week, one night a month, whatever you can do, be around other people, get accountability, join a community, even if it's online, ask questions, tell them about your concerns, where you're stuck. It does make a big difference. So I have seen a lot of people, they'll struggle with their writing, whether it's NaNoWriMo or not, but then I'm like, well, where's your accountability? Where are your people? Where does your family know that you're working on this book? Well, no. Okay, so what is the biggest issue that you're dealing with? Oh, I just get interrupted and I'm distracted all the time. Okay, well, you need to sit your family down and say 30 minutes, one hour, every morning, afternoon, night, you pick it. I need to be left alone. That's all I am asking. I just need to be left alone so I can get my words in. I think that's, again, us setting ourselves up for failure. Like I told my husband ahead of time, like so NaNoWriMo is here and I am going to be really plugged into this, which is great because it's also football season. And he's like, my time has come. Okay, good. So <laughs> Shayla can write and I'll watch football. Talk to your people. Don't go it alone. Don't isolate. I work with some of my girlfriends for the writing. And one of them had mentioned that um, she fell down a research rabbit hole. And oh, when she yes. did, we kind of drew her out because she she felt, looked at historical underwear for like two hours. Oh, what a time. <laughs> I know. And time. We, we, we finally asked her, we were like, are, are, aren't you going to write the words here? Let's help. And so we started mm-hmm. like talking it out. And we got her out of the rut. So Good. It's, it's like things like that that are so imperative to they success. I and I like. will talk stuff out. When I, I don't care if it's my husband, my writer friend, if I am audibly talking about a plot hole, I am serious almost every time I get it fixed. I met up with my friend Corey last week because I had questions about a um, about mythology, and she knows more about mythology than I have ever seen. She comes to the coffee shop with a stack of books. I start shooting her questions, and I'm telling her my problem. One hour, not only... Did we have it solved? Okay. But I figured out how to make this whole thing work for like a trilogy. I'm serious. We were drinking coffee for one hour and she said something that just made me go, oh, and I'm obsessed. And it worked out that, that quickly. You need to have your people. You should have Mm -hmm. a person for everything. And I have learned that as an editor and a writer, when I'm working on something and I, what was it two weeks ago? 
I had an author who wrote a sentence in pig Latin. And I was like, how am I going to verify this? And then I was like, oh yeah, I have a friend who speaks that gloriously. So I'll text her. You need a, you need a pig Latin friend. You get what I mean? You need a friend for every weird question that you have. <laughs> and I am that friend. If it has anything to do with true crime, I am that friend. Ooh, good to know. <laughs> so in case people do, you know, want to reach out to you and be like, Shayla. Please. Shayla. I have them ask me. <laughs> I have talked so ridiculously long about true crime that I get people who will DM me. I am not kidding. I've been screenshotting them to ask me my opinions on certain cases. And I'm like, oh, you've come to the right place. <laughs> I have no formal experience except curiosity. But yes, please ask me these questions. Yes, but for I my have opinion. Thoughts. Yes. <laughs> oh, I have many thoughts. <laughs> yes. So definitely find your people and create a community around you. You need it much more than I think you realize. Especially for the duration of the month, right? Because that is oh, a long time. Oh my Lord. Yes, Very it is. You have a lot of hard work to do this month, you guys, but you can do it. That's what I love about it. It pushes you mm -hmm. to do better. And I love being challenged. I love being able to say, look at this insane thing that I thought there was no way I could do. And I actually did it. That is my, that is a feeling of euphoria for me to be able to feel like there is no way on God's green earth that I can write 50,000 words in 30 days. But I know I did it once before and I know that I have to do it this time or I'm going to owe a hundred dollars to my arch nemesis. There you so go. I have no other choice <laughs> but to do this. Yeah. And that's the important thing. You just don't want that money going to your arch nemesis. <laughs> I can't because then I have to film myself doing it. Oh, like that's, no, the that's whole even worse. Thing. Yes. Like I really put this out there. I told everyone, like, I am not messing around on this. So I really put myself in a bind. Well, <laughs> Someone needs to read the draft to make sure I didn't just copy and paste the word like the 5,000 times. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, so you can do it. We, I believe in you. We got Thank this. You. So, yes. Thank you. <laughs> and so we've talked all about like your planner. So can you tell listeners a little bit about uh, where they can find your books sure. and how they can kind of, yeah, like connect with you in some way? Yes. Yeah, so you can just go to shaylaraquel.com to find everything you want from the, my blog posts to my interviews, to my free downloads, to the pre-publishing checklist. Everybody loves that. So if you're looking to self-publish, you get a pre-publishing checklist for free delivered to your inbox. And if you don't feel like typing that in, just Google Shayla Raquel. I'm pretty good at SEO, so I'll still pop up. And I've been having a blast on TikTok, so please follow me there as well. But I am under a different name. It's under at Shayla Lee Raquel because Shayla Raquel is already taken. Mm -hmm. And I have so much fun on that app. It's, it's really nice and entertaining, and I really enjoy it. I just moaned and groaned about Instagram last night which is ironic because the entire post was about zero reach and zero engagement. And now I have more comments on one post than I've ever had. So I think Instagram is trolling me. So <laughs> that's a conversation for another time. I am on Twitter. I just, I'm not super involved on Facebook, but the Facebook group, I would love to have you guys join for NaNoWriMo. You can just search NaNoWriMo Adventures or check the show notes, I assume, for a link. And please reach out to me if you have any questions. And honestly, if you have any feedback on the workbook, let me know. It's only available on Etsy. And I hope that you guys, I hope that it helps you a lot. I hope it inspires you and, and encourages you. Thanks so much to Shayla for joining the show. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. That way you're the first to hear new episodes when they drop. And if you get a chance, feel free to leave a review. It helps support the show and allows more opportunity to bring in all kinds of fantastic guests. Book recommendations for this episode? A Writer's Guide to Active Setting by Mary Buckham and The Emotion Thesaurus by Angela Ackerman and Becca Puglisi. As always, stay safe, be well, and keep writing.